fans me and morgan are here to bring you our week one review welcome morgan thanks joe uh we'll be going over the game of the week pokemon of the week and division standings all right and to get started we're going to start off with the game of the week uh chartriots versus the knights the championship rematch most people and by saying that i mean me have been waiting for so, Chargers ended up winning that one 2-0. And my thoughts on my own play was I played a little too fast at the beginning, which cost me some Pokemon. And Dusty's team was too weak to rock. He had too many birds. What did you think of the game? Um, Hang on. Um, I liked that. The really the only thing that I like really stood out to me. I mean, it was a good match, but the I liked that uh that Trevenant switch to Lycanroc. You did. You had a uh, that Lycanroc on that Char Y, and uh, predicted that that Solar Beam and switched into Trevenant and then back out to Lycanroc whenever he tried to flame throw you. I thought that was pretty dope. Um, yeah, that's really the only thing that stood out to me in that game. Yeah, it's always nice to see prediction games. And he did throw me off with that uh, cryogonal choice scarf. Yeah, I've never. I was surprised by that. Uh, that too. I don't, I don't see it used often. So it was. It was. There was a couple mons this week that I didn't see used often that I was really impressed with. So that was one of them. And now we move on to the Blades versus Jirachi clones. The Blades started off strong, but. I feel they started to play too safe at the end. That costed them a little bit. Indifferential. And um, I, for the Jirachi clones, I feel they could have won late game if they actually scarfed Crook instead of Focus Sash. Um, uh, the, I thought the Comfy was pretty cool. Um, that Bruxus hit, hit surprisingly hard. Uh, I didn't... I, ne I mean, I never use either of those, so... That was cool to see those. I was surprised that uh, Michael didn't run sand. Um, that's the first time I think I've ever played him or watched him play and had not run sand. So that was, uh, that was pretty interesting. Yeah, that was interesting. He didn't use that uh, Excadrill, especially since he picked up a Potus later after the draft. Yeah, I thought for sure he'd be running sand. That's what he always uses in, uh, in all of his singles matches that I've hosted with him. So... I I was really surprised. I also thought uh Matt, Matt had one play where it was a uh, he he saved his Galvantula. He, he it was Focus Sash and he saved it and uh, brought it back in to paralyze uh, that Char X and then switched or after it knocked out he threw in Salamence which they intimidate. I thought that was a really cool play. I mean that that pretty much completely nerfed that Char X. Yeah, that so, was a very smart mean, play because of Dragon Dance. We didn't see it, but that was a very potential. So, he's, Matt squeaked out of that with the 1-0. And now we move on to the Polyrass versus Tyroars. Uh, I believe Tyroars played sloppy with Pinsir versus Scizor. Uh, he went for quick attack when he could have just used a fighting type move again and actually took that thing out, possibly. <clears throat> but um, other than that, he did all right. He could have used Milotic to counter that Scizor instead. He he let that uh, Scizor set up too much. 
Yeah, that that scissor, the double sword stance definitely won him that game. That that big Milotic mill tank stall war was pretty uh not interesting. <laughs> if, I'm honest, if I'm being honest, I, mean, uh, for I think that was the watched... longest match. I think that was the longest match of the week. It was like 17 minutes. I, I think is it was it was a long match. It was it was the second longest, maybe not in time, but in turns. Um, they were, I think, 27 turns. The longest match was actually the Toros versus PSG. There were 42 turns. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, we'll get to that one. <laughs> and that's actually the next one up. Uh, the Toros versus PSG. <clears throat> I think uh, Toros played very well all the way through. They did get that lucky roll at the end on his uh, Altaria. But Maybe it was bold. I don't know. But it took that to 1% and then killed Linoon at the end. Was it typical? Well, for one, I was really uh, impressed with – I think – okay, so Paul picked Mega Audino as a joke. Like somebody made a joke about it, right? And he just decided to roll with it, wasn't it? Wasn't that what happened? Yes. Um, I was surprised at how well he utilized Audino. Um, it, it was kind of nice. Uh, yeah, it was kind of. I mean, it was good support in my opinion. Um, I thought that was the biggest upset of the week for sure. Because if if you guys don't know, Paul is our league champion or was our league champion before the the gym reset. But in in my opinion, he's easily one of the better players in the group. And uh, I thought that was definitely. I thought he had it for sure. I I don't know. His Lanoon was really cool. Mm-hmm. I thought. Um, I was surprised on uh, Richards. Tauros was, I mean, is Tauros typically used as a, yeah, it, it had a mix, it was a mixed attacker. Is that typical of Tauros? I never see t- Tauros ran Tauros mixed. Has a, Tauros is normally physical, but it has such a wide move pool that you can really put a lot of things on it. Like yeah, it's Fire Blast and Thunderbolt as well. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I wasn't expecting that, to. so I thought that was pretty neat. And neither was Paul, because that ice nope. came out of nowhere. <laughs> it did come out of nowhere. I had to rewind it when I saw it, so I was like, what the hell? Where'd that come from? But I think Paul would have won if uh, he could have got that Rotom out the way sooner and had rocks on the field. Cause yeah, Rotom's, Rotom's always dangerous. Yeah, Rotom's always trouble, always in any form. Especially using Defog. Yeah. All right, and the next match we have <clears throat> was the highest different. Well, the tied for the highest differential. Uh, Kings versus Miniors. He played great, oh, and he man. had a nice prep to counter that <laughs> shell smash. Yeah, I, he. I mean, if he didn't play him, but like, hats off to you, Stewart. That was a that was a really entertaining match. Um, I mean, that Ninetales was awesome support, and that Reuniclus straight spanked Paul's team. I could not I could not believe he swept that whole team with that. Um, I don't yeah. even know what else he used. That was, I mean, it, was that not the only two? What, what, what was the differential in that match? It was a 4-0. Uh, Reuniclus got two kills. Uh, Ninetales got one to hell, and uh, another Pokemon got one. Yeah, I didn't even see half of his team, so... Uh... <laughs> Good for you, good for you, Stuart. Paul's pretty good too, but but in the oh, future, no, that Reuniclus, go ahead. That Reuniclus just I don't know spanked ass. That's <laughs> that's all I can say about it. In the future, I would say uh, he needed to prep better for Aurora Veil. Anytime you see a Nine Tails, I would assume it's coming. Oh, definitely, definitely. And he needed some hazards or something to chip down that guy's bulky team because. That that was just too much, especially before trying to set up with Shell Smash. That should be a late was, game sweeper. It was eating everything, man. His whole his team was just taking hits like it was nothing. So I I really enjoyed watching your match, Stuart. It was it was really good plays on your part. And then next up we have Rapidash versus Grand Bulls. Um the differential was only a three oh, but due to uh Collins roll break for what was it? He used minimize is what it was. Yes, he used minimize and also used a Pokemon that he had dropped in free agency. And he still used it. So So 
he broke two rules, so he he lost. <laughs> Either way, he would have won. But uh, through all that, just watching the video and the play, Rapidash did play good, and he was in the driver's seat the whole game. He really didn't have no hiccups in that game, uh, because from what I saw from Colin, he attacked what was in front of him the whole game. He needed to learn. Yeah. How to predict and use the typing to his advantage. <clears throat> uh, Situational awareness. Yeah, he he could have kept his uh, mandibuzz around and uh, dealt with that guy's psychic type a lot better later in the game instead of letting it die to toxic. And then, womp, womp, womp. <laughs> and, the, and then last but not least, we have the Tyranitars versus the Gators. And, that was uh, my match. That was your match. And, yeah, uh, I'm the top of the Tars, if nobody knows. So, remember that. <laughs> and my notes for you, sir, is you made good plays through all, but uh, leading Shell Smash, especially see, when you saw Tentacruel, was not the best idea, in my opinion. Yeah. See, my, what I was... When I saw the tentacle, for one, I, I had never, never played it. I had only, I had only prepped for him like ten minutes before we started playing, so I, I didn't know what to expect from that tentacle. Um, but I, I didn't want to switch. I didn't, uh, I didn't know what he was gonna do with it. I didn't know if he was gonna try and counter my sand with rain. I didn't know what he was gonna try and do. So I, w I went for the shell smash. I, that was one misplay. I also had, I should have bullet punched his tentacle with my metagross, but I didn't know. I didn't realize it was uh it was scarfed, so I, I, th I, I thought it was specs. Realized. It was something. It was something that made it faster than mine, so I didn't realize it was gonna be faster, so I could have saved some damage on my Metagross by bullet punching, but I didn't. Um otherwise I'm I'm happy with how I played. It was a good match and had I not made those I could have like I could add a better differential had I not made those mistakes, but I, I mean I only brought that cloister for his Dragonite, which uh, didn't end up giving me too too much of a problem. I, I prepped that whole game expecting him to bring Gothitelle with that uh, with Shadow, Shadow Tag. So yeah, my whole strategy was to work around getting trapped, and uh, when he didn't bring it, I, I shit my pants. So I, was, <laughs> I thought I was gonna lose. I mean, as soon as Cloister went down, I was like, God, I'm, I don't have anything to deal with that Dragonite. I thought I was down for sure, but uh. I, don't, I I had a I had an alternative. I had a backup plan. So, I mean, I won. So that's all that matters to me. <laughs> Dealt with the handling. <laughs> yeah, uh, my, sure. my last advice I would give to you and to everyone else in the league: do not set up until you knock out Ditto. That thing will fill oh, your yeah. stats, and it could have been it could have made it a lot worse. <laughs> oh, definitely. It was a. Uh, I mean, I was feeling really good about it until he. I thought he was going to come back, but uh. I, I mean, I knew I had my Snorlax. I'm not going to say what its set was, but I had a, uh, I had, I think, I mean, I was, I made sure not to switch into the, to the Snorlax with his Ditto, because if he'd have got that set, it could have been real problems for me. But um, yeah, I didn't, I don't know, man. I don't see Ditto often, but I want one now. <laughs> so uh, stealing my stats, yeah, just switch the switching out towards the end where he just popped in, popped back out. It was uh, very, very irritating. Very hard to work with. And some things I have to say to the Gators coach is, yes, he did have some mix, mi misplays that were big, and he even clarified that um, he played poorly around Sand. He, he let your Stoutland do too much, in my opinion. He got almost three kills. But um, other than that, he did great with Ditto to counter your threats. You, yeah, for sure. Using what you had against you, he did a great job of that. Uh, he didn't get to take any stats, stat boost or anything, but he still did some work with Ditto. Ditto got three kills. Yeah, he he, he got the most kills. Like, what was he? He was the last one he had, wasn't he? It was the yeah. last one he ended up with. Yeah, he <clears throat> he took out half my team. I mean, I, I had a pretty good lead there until he threw that out. But, yeah, you're right. I needed to I, – I don't know. I didn't pay any attention to Ditto. Like, I saw the name on the board, and I just was – I shrugged it off like it wasn't going to be an issue. So, I'll, I'll be more prepared for that next time. And everyone else be prepared. Ditto is a Pokemon to fear. Alright guys, now we're going to go ahead and move on to um, our league leaders and kills. 
Number one, of course, is Scizor with five kills on the Polyrath's team. Of course, that double sword stamp, bullet punch, technician boost. It shows that it has some power behind it. And it shows you need to be afraid. <laughs> 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 and uh, as for second and third, we have a three-way tie for second and third. We have uh, Mega Aerodactyl from the Chartriots, which is my team. We have Ditto from the Gators, and then we have Tauros from the Tauros. So, mascot representing his team right there. They all had three kills, so they are tied for second place. So, we don't have a definite second, third place right now. But, with the coming weeks, I do expect to see a change in that. And, lastly, our division leaders... Clearly, it's only week one. There's still a lot of season to be played. But due to the differential, Polyraths and the Kings are ahead in the Kanto division. So they're tied for first and second. And the Chartreus and Tauros are tied for third and fourth. And in the Lowland division, there's a little more separation with the Rapidash being plus three. And then the Tyranitars and Blades being plus one. Everyone else with a loss that week. How did that happen? How did, how is there a an odd number of wins there? I don't I don't I didn't understand that one looking. <clears throat> okay, well we have uh seven. Oh yeah, I forgot seven, about that. Somebody seven. plays somebody in the other division. Forgot yes. about that. So me and Dusty have already played the other division. So from here on out, me and him have nothing but divisional teams to play, and then everyone else will have one team on the other side that they're going to be playing. But as of right now, these are the standings. Everything looks good. Uh, don't forget to watch all the battle videos. There was plenty of close ones. Yeah, lots of nail biters for sure. My hands were sweating in my match for like <laughs> minutes after. We were playing 10 minutes after my hands were still sweating. And notes that Dusty did want me to say about the game of the week is he feels like he could have played better if he would have quick attacked Arrow with Swellow. He would have got that kill with Kragnall, and I certainly agree he could have. It's always a close match between you two. It's oh, definitely yeah. a rivalry. He's still one win again ahead of me in our rivalry, too, so. Oh, uh, yeah, y'all get another still... one this season. It's kind of beautiful, honestly. It's a, it's a beautiful <laughs> rivalry. It's fun to watch. All right, guys. Well, that's all from PMLDC today. Thank you, Morgan, for closing this out with me. Not a problem, man. We'll see y'all next week, guys. See ya.